Topic 1.15 is all about fraction application problem solving. So when you're solving problems, whether they're fraction problems, decimal problems, whole number problems, the steps can all be very similar. So you're going to always read the question very carefully, looking for key words and any important numbers that are given. So you're looking for all that given information. Using a highlighter, underlining, writing the keywords down can be very helpful. Number two, you're going to restate the information in your own words, whether you do that mentally by visualizing what's happening or you draw a picture to help yourself to figure out what's going on in the story of the word problem. That's really critical for you to understand the concept. And once you understand, then you can do step three, which is making the decision of what you're going to do. Are you going to add? Are you going to subtract, multiply, or divide? Will this take one step? Will you have to do many different steps in order to solve? So you work out that plan. Step four, you solve the problem. Ask yourself, is the answer reasonable based on the situation? And step five, you write a sentence. Remember to include the units. Units are things like dollars, centimeters, grams, feet. What are we counting? That's important information to note. Some word problems are simpler than others. It's all about the concept, visualizing what's happening. If you have experience with the, with the situation and a problem, you will find the problem easier to solve than situations that you don't have experience with. There are a number of keywords that can help you to determine the operation you will choose. But these keywords are not perfect. So you want to notice them and use them to help you, but not to rely on them. Sometimes a word can be used and it can mean different things. For example, more can be used for both adding problems and subtraction problems. So you need to be careful with relying on these vocabulary words. Question number one says, by using the hunt and peck method, so Sid is a one finger typer, Sid typed a 40 word message in two and a half minutes. What was Sid's average typing speed per minute? So what we're doing here is we're taking a look at what the question wants from us. What the question wants is the speed per minute. So that means for one minute. He typed a whole bunch of words in two and a half minutes. So we have a greater amount of time than what the question is asking for. So what we have actually are our totals. We have the total amount of words and we have the total amount of time. And when you have the totals, you only have two choices. You either subtract or you divide. And in this case, because we're looking for each and every minute to be the same, we are going to choose division. So we are going to take 40 words and divide it by two and a half. Now we need to set up the problem so that we can actually do the math. So we're going to take the 40 and we're going to create a fraction from that by placing it over one. And our mixed number, the two and a half minutes, we need to change that to an improper fraction, five over two. We know with division that to make division easier, we keep it the first fraction, we flip the second fraction and we change to multiplication. So we keep, we change, and we flip to two fifths. So we're still dividing, but it's division in disguise by doing the inverse of the fraction and the inverse operation. Now we are multiplication, so we're going to cross reduce. So we're going to divide by five and divide by five. And now we can multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and simplify. So the answer is 16, and we go back to the question, what is his average typing speed per minute? His average typing speed is 16 words per minute. Number two, a waiter earned $15 and one-fifth of a dollar per hour wages and 12 and four-fifths per hour in tips. 
how much would he earn altogether in a four-hour shift? So this problem is asking us to find the combined value of the wages and the tips, but it's also asking us to find for a different amount of time than one hour. So this is a two-part problem. First of all, what we can do is we can combine the two amounts of money by adding them. So we're going to take 15 and 1 fifth plus 12 and 4 fifths. And that way we can find how much this waiter is earning in one hour. Let's combine these. Now here we don't need to change to improper fractions, although you could, because if you look at the fractions, you're going to be adding the numerators, 1 plus 4 is 5, over 5, and you're going to be adding the whole numbers. 15 plus 12 is 27. And 27 and 5 fifths is the same as 28. So this waiter is earning $28 per hour. So step two is to figure out how much in four hours. So now we're going to multiply the $28 times four. We can do that work over on the side here. Eight times four is 32. Carry the 3, and 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So that is $112. So this person will earn $112 in 4 hours. I'd also like to complete the first question in exercise 1.15, and then you will complete the rest of the exercise. So number one, yesterday Louise spent three quarters of an hour studying for an English exam. Today she spent only half as long as yesterday. For what fraction of an hour did she study today? So the key concept in a question like this is the fact that Louise is spending half as long as yesterday. So we have a couple of options. We're looking at half of the time she spent yesterday, which is three quarters of an hour. Key word, key concept here is the idea of, of. We're spending a part of the three quarters. In this case, we're going to multiply. So we're going to take half of three quarters. There's nothing to cross reduce. So we end up getting three eighths of an hour is what she studied today. There is another way to look at this, especially because it's half, which is taking half of something means dividing it by two. But really when you do this with fractions, you end up multiplying by a half anyways. So if you wanted to divide three quarters in half, divide it by two, you would end up keeping the three quarters, changing to multiplication, and flipping the fraction anyway, giving you the same result, of course. So with a question like number one, take some practice to get used to the idea of a part of a whole, even if that whole happens to be a fraction. But whenever you have a piece of something, you are going to do multiplication. 